NASA scientist speaks of gigantic extraterrestrial spacecraft hiding in Saturn's rings. And I'll leave a link below for the 24-minute video. He's a NASA scientist, as we said. And uh, he explains that uh, they seem to be in the rings of Saturn. And they're a huge craft, but he claims that they it's not as if they're creating them. He seems to think that they may be somehow nursing off of them. Uh, it's something similar to what we saw happening to our sun a couple of years back when we saw some kind of an object with a filament attached to the sun and it seemed to have been somehow nursing off the sun and then it broke off and then took off. Uh, something very strange. Well, you know, we can see these objects now because of the tremendously strong telescopes that we have. And we see all types of things going on. But it's important to know what this NASA scientist is telling us. The video is a clip from Project Camelot's Kerry Cassidy interviewing Dr. Norman Berggren, B-E-R-G-R-U-N. Berggren, and it's about what's really going on in space. This is by Alexander Light on Humans Are Free. The, he's a mechanical engineer, and Dr. Bergram has worked for Ames Research Laboratory, NACA, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, and Lockheed Missiles and Space Company, and now known as Lockheed Martin. He then went on to form Bergram Engineering and Research, so that's his own company. And you can view some of his publications for NASA, where he worked for more than a decade in the link here. Now, coming from such a distinguished background, we can make several basic assumptions about him, not least of which is that he is highly intelligent. And we can also assume that he knows and has worked with other intelligent and powerful people, and that he has had access to extremely sensitive data, which he himself makes clear in the interview, saying that he has had access to classified data, of course. And... Um, and uh, this is an interview having to do with the book he has written, The Ringmakers of Saturn. And uh, I always wanted to uh, find out what is going on with this, The Ringmakers of Saturn. Now, what makes Norman's story so intriguing is not only his impressive background, but the fact that hundreds of other scientists and politicians and high-ranking military personnel have also shared information like, like his like this. He's just one of many insiders exposing the reality of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and also extraterrestrial beings. When former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor Dr. Brian O'Leary said that there is, quote, abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been visiting us for a very long time, and quote, he wasn't joking. And again, this has to do with uh, what uh, the Emerald Tablets, Tablets, written by the Atlantean Thoth, confirms as well. Now, uh, there are now officially declassified documents that verify a long history of military encounters with these objects. And uh, I think we have to get, we'll be getting more in a month or so, because the UK is also going to declassify all their UFO ET documents to be made available online for the whole world to uh, use as references. Now, the objects which uh, are performing these maneuvers that no known aircraft can before perform, all while traveling at speeds no known aircraft can travel, not only that, but at the same time the pilots visually confirm their sightings, these objects are being tracked on both air and ground radar. Dr. Jacques Vallée, notable for co-developing the first computerized mapping of Mars for NASA and for his work at SRI International on the Network Information Center for ARPANET, A-R-P-A-N-E-T, ARPANET, a precursor to the modern Internet, published a paper in the Journal of Science Exploration titled Estimates of Optical Power Output in six cases of unexplained aerial objects with defined luminosity characteristics. And there you can see some pictures taken by military pilots of the objects they encountered. When entering into the vicinity of these objects, 
it's not uncommon for critical electrical equipment to go dead. UFO, they just stop working. UFOs have also been seen hovering around global nuclear missile facilities, at which time these facilities completely shut down and the nukes within go offline. And you can learn more about that in the link here as well. Now, according to Herman Oberth, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and astronautics, quote, flying saucers are real and they are spaceships from another solar system. I think that they possibly are manned by intelligent observers who are members of a race that may have been investigating our Earth for centuries, end quote. This is a quote from Oberth Herman, flying saucers come from a distant world, American Weekly, October 24th, 1954. There are literally hundreds of shocking quotes from people of such reputable backgrounds and thousands of documents pertaining to the UFO phenomenon, which lead even more credibility to the video that uh, I'll leave a link below for you to see. Quote, what I found out is these things inhabit Saturn. That's where I first discovered them and they're prol proliferating, proliferating, sorry, end quote. By the way, the ships Norman speaks of are around the rings of Saturn and they're humongous. Dr. Norman Bergram tweets, is Engelados an electromagnetic vehicle supplying material for Saturn's E-rings? Engelados is a Greek word, I don't know how you would you pronounce that in English, Enceladus, all right. His book mentioned is currently above uh, ring makers of, Mar of Saturn, is currently selling about $2,000 on Amazon. It has government pictures from the Voyagers and other high-tech machines of the spaceships that have been seen over Saturn's rings. Again, what makes this testimony so interesting is the fact that he is one of many high-ranking whistleblowers in the field. And uh, the, the uh, title is The Ringmakers of Saturn. Respected ex-NASA scientist says giant spheres are creating the rings. So I'll leave a link below and you can see the video. At recent events at the end of 2017, the United States government officially admitted the existence of UFOs with the release of previously classified footage of two Navy pilots scrambling to intercept one UFO. Luis, uh, Luis uh, Elizondo, a former high-ranking military intelligence officer who was in charge of the Pentagon's uh, recently disclosed UFO program, made an appearance on mainstream national news to discuss the topic and the video release showed an object traveling at very high speeds in, uh, and performing maneuvers that should be impossible based on our known laws of aerodynamics. The Pentagon released two videos of separate objects and both of them were displaying maneuvers that no known man-made aircraft can perform. In one of the videos, a smaller object was seen coming out of another, making three objects when the pilots began approaching the object at a close range, both of them accelerated instantaneously from an already high speed and disappeared within seconds. Louise made a point to emphasize that this is something that has been happening for a long time and something that happens a lot. This has been made clear by hundreds of other high-ranking personnel from within the military, several other fields, and the release of millions of pages of UFO documents from dozens of governments. And these documents are full of radar returns, visual confirmations, and electro-optical data. And the next question to ask is, who is the intelligence behind the wheel? And I discuss that further in your article below. It's official. We now know that UFOs or UAPs, uh, unidentified aerial phenomena, are real. So are the extraterrestrials or not? Question mark. When asked if he believed these objects are extraterrestrial, he stated that there is a compelling evidence to suggest that we, quote, may not be alone, whatever that means, end quote. Now, Manly P. Hall believes that these extraterrestrial uh, UFOs could be the remnants of the Atlantean advanced high technology because, as we know, they had space travel and they also had uh, interstellar travel. And they had gone to other areas of the world after the great flood, the deluge, and they set up uh, new cities with their high technology. A lot of them, of course, had 
uh, underground cities and uh, pyramids. And they lived for thousands of years and they could be around us today. Uh, they supposedly are living underground. They come out at the twilight of sun, uh, sun uh, dusk or at sunrise because they don't want to be burned by the sun. The atmosphere of the earth was totally different before the Great Flood. As we know, they didn't have the same kind of sunlight. They didn't even have rainbows. And um, there are, if you see one of my past videos having to do with um, the uh, construction over, um, let me see that, humans before the flood, Peru's ancient caves of dangerous energies, pre-flood inhabitants alive. Uh, there's an um, archaeologist there, a doctor who talks about these very strange constructions in uh, Cusco in Peru. And uh, he claims that these beings are giants and they come out at twilight uh, because they can't, they were around before the, the flood and they knew it was coming and they made these underground habitations and um, that they are, uh, they come out of twilight so that they don't get uh, burned by the sun. And you can see that, I'll leave a link below for you for that. Um, I, I put that up yesterday. And um, Manly P. Hall believes that they can be the leftover Atlanteans that are still alive today and making their appearance like this with these craft. And they also had interdimensional travel, by the way. They can zip in and out from other dimensions. So going back to this article, um, he stated that there's compelling evidence to suggest that we may not be alone, whatever that means, quote unquote. Quote, I will tell you unequivocally that through the observations, scientific methodologies, that were applied to look at this phenomena, that these aircraft are displaying characteristics that are not currently within the U.S. inventory, nor in any foreign inventory that we are aware of." End quote. And he also made other strong points in the interview. Quote, we have deliberately stayed away from going down the rabbit hole of who's behind the wheel and what are their intentions because a lot of people have a lot of feelings towards that and they are very emotional about that." End quote. The pilot was, as with hundreds of others who have had the same type of experience, stated his belief that these objects are not from our world. And uh, the source is Collective Evolutions, it's on Humans Are Free, and it's um, by Alexander Light, Creative Commons. And I'll leave a link below, you can watch the very interesting 24-minute um, interview so that you can see what the scientist has to say, Dr. Bergram, uh, having to do with who is, of course, the head of Bergram Engineering and Research. And uh, let me know what you think about this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.